love Renaissance period clothing. It's just so functional and practical. Waving to your subjects. I think I have officially become the queen of the castle. You didn't know the king could dance like that, did you? <laughs> Good morning, adventurers. Good morning. From one of the most beautiful places in the world, the Loire Valley. Although, unfortunately, <laughs> Except the for weather. at the very moment where it's very nasty outside. Yeah. <laughs> we came to this chateau to do an epic bike ride and it was awesome at first and then all of a sudden it started raining and it got kind of gross. Yeah, but, oopsie. Oh well. But the views are still incredible still as incredible. you can see. The Loire Valley is located in central France and it's known for having some incredible food, so many vineyards, and of course chateaus like the one that we're in right now, which we're going to tell you guys a little bit more about in just a little bit. We are going to get to spend the next few days in this area experiencing everything it has to offer. There is seriously so much to see and do here. I think it's going to completely blow us away. But first off, we have to talk about these amazing chateaus that the area is known for. So we're going to head inside and then tell you more when we get there. How amazing is the interior of this staircase? I've never yeah. been inside of a staircase. Check this out. And you walk in and it's just like you're staring up at God. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> it really feels like he's up there watching us. Oh my God. Welcome to Chateau du Chambord. This is actually considered to be the most recognizable chateau in the world. It was originally built in, oh, almost <laughs> fell just then. <laughs> It was originally built in the 1500s and it has a French Renaissance architecture which is kind of a blend of traditional medieval forms mixed with classical Renaissance structures. Unfortunately, I don't really know that much about architecture so I'm just reading it off of this thing. But for you architecture buffs out there, you probably know exactly what I'm on about. From the outside, the structure is absolutely magnificent. It is one of the coolest looking castle, chateaus, whatever you want to call it that we've ever seen. And on the inside, you're going to find 77 individual staircases and over 400 rooms, 440 rooms. I think to be exact. So this place is cavernous. All of the different chateaus are so unique. They all have different architecture styles and completely different histories. We actually took a brief stop to Chaumont sur Loire, which is a smaller chateau compared to Chambord, which is the first one that we went to. It's definitely just as beautiful, but just a lot more compact. So they have a festival there every year where they have gardeners submit potential projects and then they pick the winners and then they create the installations and they are absolutely breathtaking. So there's this whole area that you walk through and every little path that you walk down leads to a different garden installation with all kinds of different themes. It was amazing just walking through and exploring all that. The next chateau we came to that we're at right now is the Chateau in Amboise and this thing is much more grand than Chaumont sur Loire and it just kind of overlooks the surrounding area. It's absolutely stunning. The castle dates back to the 11th century when it was first initially built completely different than what you see here but it was built as a defensive structure kind of like a fort. It was actually seized in the 15th century by Charles the seventh. The owner was convicted of conspiring against the king and he was sentenced to death but before they actually executed him King Charles pardoned him and then kept the chateau <laughs> so he was basically just like nice chateau I'll have that so we are going to give you guys a little bit of a look around the chateau but I feel like our clothes are not quite appropriate yeah I think we're gonna do something about that right now much better that is more like it let's go I mean, what is this device? <laughs> Back to work. They're taking us on a bit of a tour of the castle and everyone is taking pictures with us because <laughs> we look so boss. We look so amazing. <laughs> I think we would have fit in back in the Renaissance Definitely. period. Right? We have a very Renaissance <laughs> style about us. <laughs> We just walked down this enormous spiral walkway that the horses would have taken to get up to the top and check out the interior. Is that crazy or what? When you walk in and look up, it's just like, oh, <laughs> it's insane. It's really powerful. Yeah. I thought that in the staircase interior in the first chateau was yeah, incredible, but this one, one upped it. Ugh. 
this is yeah. at least 10 times nuts. as big. This is phenomenal. Yeah. It's a crazy feeling just looking up at this. It seems fake or like computer generated or something. I still can't believe people wore these and lived here and it just does not compute. <laughs> what would they think if they saw us? <laughs> oh God, I don't know. <laughs> would we with fit my, in or would they be able to tell immediately? With our van shoes yeah. on? Our shoes would give us away. They for would sure. know that we're dope. <laughs> Sadly, our reign has come to an end. <laughs> I guess we have to go back to real life now. Yeah. I don't want to. We I do. want to be a queen forever. I got to tell you, walking around the castle in this Eric garb. Eric has been loving it. Everyone's been taking his photo and he's like, yes, yes. Meanwhile, I'm like, ha, ha, hey, bonjour. But we have one more chateau that we want to show you mm -hmm. before we move on to more of the Loire Valley. So we'll see you there. We've arrived at the final chateau that we wanted to bring you guys. It is Chateau Villandry. The chateau itself is stunning, just like all the rest. It's a little bit smaller than some of the other ones that we've been to. It was originally a 14th century keep, which the chateau was built around, and there's one tower from the keep still left. But the real star of this chateau is the gardens. They are like nothing that you have probably ever seen before. From above, it just makes this grid of all these different beds of different types of produce and flowers and herbs and all kinds of stuff and they have multiple types of gardens it is just absolutely magical walking around and i told allison it's almost like you're in the middle of a video game scene or something like that like zelda That's it's what just it feels so like. pristine and so well laid out it almost looks fake yeah and they have these grape vines growing and the coolest part is they encourage guests to try the grapes so we were told to grab the biggest one we could find. <laughs> and they use no chemicals on these, so they are completely organic. Nice. Oh, <laughs> almost <great. laughs> That popped, <laughs> nice. That was impressive, wow. Oh, the grapes here. They're just, I mean, obviously they're the best. <laughs> There is one reason to come to the Loire Valley, do it for the chateaus. Oh I mean, there's gosh. a lot of other stuff to do here, but the chateaus, you could just go from one to the next. There's They're all so, so many. unique. They're so beautiful. They're all so different on the inside. Oh, I've loved it. Strolling through all these gardens and chateaus has made us work up quite an appetite. So let's go get some food. So many delicious meals here in the Loire Valley. Such unique food, tons of really tasty stuff. But one place we really wanted to show off to you is this place that we came to for dinner. It's called Bistro des Hautes de Loire. And it's smack in the middle between the town of Orléans and Tours. And uh, properly in the middle of nowhere. And I think it's attached to a hotel. But when you walk into the restaurant, it's got this really cozy vibe on the inside, wood beams. It has an exposed kitchen back there so you can watch the chefs cooking, which is always great. All the ingredients look super fresh. We've already placed our order and I think the food is gonna be quite delicious. Our starters have arrived and we went very French and got some snails in butter sauce and it has one- Escargot. Uh, sorry, escargot, yes. It has one hazelnut. Oh my God. It smells so good and buttery, but some of them are still bubbling, so I'm gonna blow on it for a second so that I can actually taste the rest of my meal. Okay. Mm. There's so much butter on it. And the hazelnut, I've never had hazelnut on top of there. It's very interesting. It adds a nice little crunch and it's really savory. The nutty flavor to it. Most unique escargot I've ever had. The main courses have arrived and I went with the lamb shanks and it's these two chunks of lamb that look so crispy and delicious, you can hear them crunching on the outside. And they sit on top of some vegetables and some uh, semolina couscous. Let's see what these lamb shanks are all about. Wow, look at that, it's so soft on the inside. And then it's got this really crunchy layer on the outside. That is so interesting. I really have no idea what to expect from this. It's not really what I was thinking it was gonna be. It's just like these cubes of meat, like little meat pockets. Mm. Well, it's good. It's really good. Jeez. I was really not expecting that, but that is some of the most delicious lamb I've ever had in my life. It's so thick and hearty and perfectly stewed on the inside, and on the outside it has this really crunchy, thin, almost papery kind of layer, but papery in a good way. And it's all nice and burned on the outside. Wow, the flavor of that lamb is incredible. I went with the chicken fricassee, and we'll see if it lives up to the lamb shanks. I just tried them. They're delicious. 
I honestly have never had fricassee before. I didn't know what it was, but it's this beautiful chicken that's, I guess, braised and then stewed in this sauce. They say typically a white sauce. This one has Orléans vinegar on it, which is vinegar from the region. Mm. Well, that's really interesting. The chicken is really nice and perfectly cooked. That sauce, though, is, I don't even know how to describe it. It's kind of tangy. It's kind of it's a little acidic from the vinegar. I don't know. It's unlike anything, like a, a veggie cream sauce, something like that. I tried Allison's chicken. It's good. But wait, if you come here, get the lamb shank. <laughs> but if you like chicken and you aren't into lamb, get the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> get it all. All right, y'all, we're going to eat, drink, and be merry, I guess. <laughs> be married? Because we're married. married. <laughs> Some of you guys asked, we're married. Yeah, we just both lost our rings, <laughs> in case you're wondering why we don't have them. Still have the engagement ring now. <laughs> All right. All right, anyways, onward. <laughs> Y'all, we have absolutely loved exploring the chateaus and castles in this area. We became king and queen for a day, so we thought it was only fitting to get our own chateau. So welcome to our chambers. Just kidding. This is a chateau, but it is the Chateau des Apprentis, and it is a chateau that has been turned into a bed and breakfast. We are in this magnificent master suite. It has this fantastic huge bed out in the open, a bathtub out in the open. The coolest thing about this room is when you walk in, you see these gigantic exposed beams. They look so massive and so cool. They actually date back to the 14th century. I'm sure they've been kept up quite a bit, but there's some original wood up there. That's nuts. And when you walk in, you can just smell the wood. It smells so rich and would like. <laughs> Touring chateaux, sipping wine and stuff in our faces is fun and all. And so basically our favorite thing to do <laughs> now that I'm saying it. But there's a bunch of other stuff that you can do in the Loire Valley. Like go up in this little guy. Yes. This little ULM plane. We are gonna get to take this up and go over some chateaus, some beautiful land. So we'll see mm -hmm. everything that we've been seeing on the ground from above. And I'm so excited. The weather, as you can see, has gotten very nice. It's no nice more out rain. today now. Oh my gosh. All right, let's hit the skies. Well, that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see everything? Oh, I saw all the things. We just cut it all together, but we took two different flights because you can only fit two people in the plane. <laughs> <laughs> it's very small, yeah, very cozy, video. but you get to see so much with these huge windows. And it's such a light aircraft. You can see that this is, the wing is just covered in like a tarp. Yeah. That's crazy. So it barely gets any speed and just goes whoop, lifts right up. It's yeah, awesome. the runway is teeny tiny. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a fear of heights, you might not want to fly this plane. I don't know. But if you don't, then do. Yes. Oh. <laughs> hey, cutie. Hi. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> you came running. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know what you're doing, too. You guys are so sneaky. <laughs> Did you all know that there are 13 types of goat cheese here in France and five of those come from the Loire Valley alone? So we figured while we're in the area, we got to stop and meet the chefs, right? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, we have all the baby goats here. <laughs> They're so cute. Oh my God. And they just want to lick you so bad. <laughs> they really do. They're the sweetest little guys. I think these ones are six to eight months old. They have them starting as young as I think six months. Oh my gosh, yeah. this is the coolest. Like, what is he even doing? I, don't know. I love him. <laughs> We've been petting these guys for the last hour, but I think we're supposed to go watch how the milking's done. Yes, so. and pr probably try the cheese. Let's go. I'm being eaten by a goat. Ah! <laughs> this is the room where they process the goat cheese. So they separate the curds from the whey, and the curds get put into all these different types of molds. They have so many different shapes. I had no idea. How many shapes did she say? I think she said like, uh, they can do up to like 40. So many different shapes of goat cheese. The cheeses in this room, they're adding flavoring to, I think. So it said on the sign out there, this is powdered charcoal, which gives it a nutty flavor. That is so interesting. I guess I've always seen 
black flex and goat cheese, but yeah. I had no idea it was charcoal. Powdered charcoal, there you go. There you go, now you know. We have seen our goats, we have learned about how they get milked and learned about the cheese process, exactly. and now we get to try the finished product. So we just learned that the rind on the goat cheese forms the older it is. So if it's a little more fresh, it probably won't look like there's a rind on it, but it goes from this really fresh, and then it gets older, older, and older, and older, and I think that one's yeah, pretty that one old. Really old. Do I do the whole thing? Yeah, sure. Rind and all. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, it's so rich and creamy. Wow. Is it pretty funky or is it's it? It's funky. <laughs> <laughs> Probably don't eat a whole bite at once all on its own. It needs something, but unless you really love goat cheese, that is as fresh and delicious as it gets. Is that what a turkey says? Chicken? Is it a chicken or a turkey? <laughs> chicken. <laughs> well, that's going to do for our visit here to the goat cheese farm. We had a great time though. It we was very a... adorable yeah. and very delicious. It was pretty much the best morning ever. The Loire River runs right through the Loire Valley and you actually can't take many types of boats out onto the river because it gets extremely shallow in some places. So they have these traditional flat bottom boats that you can take out because they sit very high up in the water so they can go even into a few inches of water and still be fine. We're gonna hop on one of these cool traditional boats and go see the Loire Valley from a very different angle. You guys think we were gonna have a proper captain? Nope, it's me. <laughs> Will we make it back to shore live? Probably not. <laughs> The wind is really starting to pick up and you can just get a sense of how fast we're going. We're faster than we could even go under the, the engine power. If you all thought we were going to come to Loire Valley and not try wine, you were sorely mistaken. Dead wrong. That is one of the biggest things this area is known for. Sure, the chateaus are great, the food is wonderful, but the wine. So we have come to the Chinon area of Loire Valley to the Pierre Sourdet winery. We actually just went out into the vineyards. They were absolutely beautiful. It's fall, so the leaves are all changing color. We also got to try some of the grapes fresh off the vine. We've never done that before. Much better than what you get in the supermarket. <laughs> but now we have come inside. We are looking at some of the barrels where they're aging yeah, some of the look wine. Look at these things. These are the largest and these, most classy wine barrels. Yes, they hold 5,000 and liters. Look I think how many would, of them they have. Maybe maybe they could give us one. I think that lasts us the rest of our life, probably. <laughs> you could just drink straight from this tap right here. I think you just turn that knob. <laughs> yeah, but we're gonna go learn a bit more about this winery and the production, and then the most important part, taste it all. The first wine we're tasting is white. Yes. but it's actually made from red grapes. We just learned that if you press them lightly, then the red from the skin doesn't seep yeah. into it and it stays white. I had no idea that was actually no possible. No idea. Look, we're learning with our alcohol. <laughs> wow, that's really good. That's unique. Yeah, we're not very good at describing wine, but yeah, it's fruity, Ooh, it's, light, yeah. crisp, sure. All, all, <laughs> the, all the wine things that you want. <laughs> we have a tray of so many delicious and unique looking bites to try mm -hmm. with our wine. And what, what is this, a little chocolate brownie? That's what it looks like, <laughs> but no, it is 100% the opposite. This little guy is black pudding, but apparently it's sweet, so maybe it is brownie-like. But it really looks like chocolate. Oh, it tastes like sweet beef jerky <laughs> with the consistency of fudge. That's really <laughs> fantastic, actually. This is the most delicious black, do you, black pudding? I always yeah. get it wrong. I would say blood pudding that so <laughs> black pudding that I have ever had. So we've seen the Loire Valley by air, we've seen it by river, and now we're gonna see it by car. Sidecar. We 
officially ending our tour, our tour in the town of Tour. <laughs> We're ending our trip here in the town of Tour, and so we're taking this motorbike ride through the city to learn a bit more about it. Are you enjoying the ride? Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> this is the best way to see a city. It is. This it's is so more cool. fun than I thought it would yeah. be. <laughs> Enjoy your stay in France. Thank you very much. And yeah. Came back when you want. We okay. definitely will be back. We just came back to our hotel and are enjoying a little bit of wine. This is actually the wine from the uh, winery we went to. Oh yeah. Check it out, we got a bottle. And it is very good. This it was is. our favorite of everything we tasted. Yep. But I hope you guys enjoyed exploring the Loire Valley with us. We had an amazing time. Oh. Everything that we did, by the way, is going to be linked in, in the description below. Yes, and if you have any other secret amazing things to do, make sure you comment down below so that we can do them next time we're in the area or people mm -hmm. visiting can do them. It's been an amazing experience. So beautiful, so delicious, so pretty. Bon nuit, adventures. We'll see you on the road.